I started playing this latest entry into the classic horror franchise thinking, man, this isn't that scary. I can play this with my headphones on in the dark, no problem. But then it got so terrifying that I ripped off my headphones and turned on all the lights. Shit got real. And that scene will forever scar me for the rest of my life. Oh, and what did I think about the rest of the game? Well, let's talk about it. What's up guys, welcome to That Freaking Geek, and today I'll be giving you my opinion of Resident Evil Village. If you've been following me these last few weeks, you know that I've been looking forward to this game for months now, playing the hell out of those demos. My Resident Evil journey started with Biohazard, the seventh entry into the franchise, and while I loved Resident Evil 2 Remake, However, I disliked the over-glorified DLC that was Resident Evil 3 Remake. My favorite was Biohazard hands down, that game was so terrifying and a blast to play. So I was itching to play the sequel and I was very keen to see how Ethan Winters and his wife Mia continued their lives after the horrors of the messed up Baker family. Seriously, they probably needed a whole lot of therapy after that. Quick disclaimer, I won't be going into big spoilers, however mild spoilers such as locations and bosses do need to be mentioned in order for me to fully unpack my thoughts. So if you want to enter this game completely blind, rather go play it and then come back and watch this. Cool, now that is settled, where does the story pick up? You play as Ethan Winters again and you are happily married to Mia with a gorgeous baby daughter and a move to Europe to finally put the past behind you. But then your world gets turned upside down again when Mia is brutally murdered in front of you and your daughter is taken away from you for no good reason. And then you're knocked out because you know, stuff you and your happiness. What? Why? You then wake up and find yourself in a village that has seen better days. You're determined to find your daughter in this godforsaken place. And that in a nutshell is the story. My general opinion of the entire story as a whole is a positive one. Albeit a bit video gamey in the sense that you need to go collect four different pieces from four different areas to unlock where you actually need to get to. But I don't mind that kind of story progression if it's done well and I think it's done very well in Village. But where the game really shines is its gameplay, level design and my favourite part which is the zany characters you need to defeat. Let's just say parts of the human imagination are better left alone. But starting off with gameplay, it's super intense and I love the first person perspective introduced by Biohazard. It does wonders for the storytelling and it really puts you in the shoes of the protagonist. The way you walk around wobbling your weapons in front of you or fighting off enemies in a panic fumbles feels so authentic and engaging. This is a survival horror and so every bullet counts but you can't help but want to just shoot frantically at every horrifying enemy. Luckily, there is the merchant, the duke, that somehow always appears when you need him and has a shop set up ready to sell you what you need. This guy's up there with my favorite merchants in a game of all time. Why are you doing all this? Why, it's all part of our first class customer service. Please do come again soon. Your weapons each feel unique, thanks to the PS5 controller. From the handgun trigger resistance to the shotgun vibration kick. Playing with a 3D audio headset really immersed me too. Hearing all the sounds from all the right directions had me absolutely absorbed by the game world and all its terrifying and sometimes totally unnecessary sounds and noises. There was never a time when I thought the gameplay was too much or too little. Village so elegantly gets you going from wild gunfights to solving light whimsical puzzles. Constantly on edge though because you know this is a horror game after all. But all while running in beautiful 4K with smooth 60 frames and gorgeous lighting thanks to ray tracing. I really can't get over how flipping incredible this game looks. Everything rendered truly looks next gen in my opinion. It's very impressive. And each section of the game is so distinctive that no part of the game ever feels stale. As you wobble into view of the village, 
the giant gothic castle in the background, it truly is a sight to behold. The village is the glue that sticks all the other sections together because you'll be returning here frequently. Moving on to the castle with Big Lady D herself roaming the castle with her daughters. You've seen all this before in the demos. This place is so spectacularly crafted and is a joy to explore. <laughs> Maybe it isn't the most scariest of places, but don't worry because things take a turn for the worst when you enter the Dohas. <sighs> Puppeteered by Frightening Dolly. This section is the uh, section that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. It truly terrified me and I'm not sure if I'm ever going to recover from this experience. Thankfully, things get less extreme as you move on to the water wonderland that is the reservoir. This is the most disappointing area with windmills and sunken buildings being less scary and more depressing. It does work however with concept art becoming a cool reality in this area that is controlled by a miserable mutant fish man that won't let you leave that easily. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> you're stupid. You talk too much. <laughs> but when you do leave, you're taken to Heisenberg's area, which includes a factory that really challenges your gun skills. The upgraded enemies here feel fierce, and you never truly feel that you're going to get out here alive. Heisenberg really makes you work for it. But then you get the ending that I won't spoil here. But I will say that I just found it disappointing at first, but luckily it got better by the end with some delicious revelations. Overall, I found it was 10 hours of concentrated survival horror taking you to such eccentric places and facing off some truly outlandish enemies. While it doesn't do anything particularly extraordinary with its story or gameplay, it oozes atmosphere and it's exactly what I wanted from this type of game. That's it from me, I hope you enjoyed it if you're watching on YouTube why not subscribe and if you liked it why don't you give it a like and if you're watching on instagram why not share it but at least please just heart it it's really really great to be with you here today thanks so much for supporting and watching i'll see you on the next one cheers why the fuck is this happening again <sighs> shit <laughs>